Well, I actually don't think of it as a, a Netflix or a Disney Plus question. I think of it as a ecosystem question. So, you know, you look at cable where basically up until six or seven years ago, um, uh, people were spending a hundred bucks plus in the US on cable and then several hundred bucks on entertainment writ large. Um, and I think there's an argument to be made that television has gotten better, the quality of televisions, quality of sound systems, et cetera, have gotten better. And so I personally think, and this is somebody, I, I speak as someone who has young kids, the, the value of going to the movie theaters is going down. Um, and the value of cable is going down. So if you think about all the spending on movies, other than tentpole movies like Star Wars and the Marvel movies. Um, I used to go to the movies once a week. Now I maybe go once every other month. Um, um, so if you, if you look at that, then you could say the, the question really should be as those other forms of spending decrease, um, I don't believe that entertainment's gonna become less valuable writ large sure. as a second. So then it's just how much of that gets redistributed into SVODs versus other things. And then there's the question of the unit economics at the subscriber level, I guess, for Netflix, you know, and, and, and the, the money they're spending. I mean, I guess that's how you traditionally look at these sub businesses. But like, how do you look at lifetime value? Or I mean, how do you look at that? Because I think the other analogy was from the AT&T acquisition, where I think it, it netted out around $1,000 per subscriber. Um, but the world's changed now, right? And you have HBO, Disney Plus, all competing online for these content. How do you look at that? That's on value discussion. Uh, well, I don't know, but like, let's take Disney Plus, for example. Like, let's say that all of their movies are going to come through, you know, and sort of it's like, okay, I may stop i mean stop going to see marvel and disney movies in the theater and uh so then i look in and, and they have a movie a month so then i look and i say well geez for me to take my family i was going to spend 50 bucks to go see star wars now i'm just going to wait so that month that star wars comes out that's worth at least 20 or 30 bucks to me maybe it's not quite the same experience as going mm. to the movie um, and if that's a once a month thing, um, as a consumer to Disney Plus, I could easily say, see paying 20 or 30 bucks. Um, so um, so the, to answer your question, I think the people that have valuable content propositions, Narcos, The Crown, Stranger Things, The Witcher, The Irishman, and the Disney Plus things, I think there's price elasticity i don't have any data to support it this is just my instinct that people are going to be willing to pay a lot of money for services that are bringing tentpole content on a monthly basis right the market is just right. big enough yeah. where i get sketched out is how many services are going to be able to do that right. so i bet i bet the winners can charge 30 40 50 bucks over time um, but i don't know how many winners there are there's sure. probably three of them. There's probably not 10.